ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानांजनशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम मुखम करोति वाचा पंगु लंघाते गिरी यत्तमहम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिणी परमानंदमाधव श्री चैतन्यश्वर नमो विष्णुपय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे के हरे कृष्णा सो वेलकम एवरीवन टू अवर ट्यूसडे इवनिंग क्लास सो लास्ट टाइम वी वर डिस्कसिंग नेक्टर ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन टेक्स्ट नंबर टू एंड एनीबडी रिमेंबर्स व्हाट इज द सेकंड टेक्स्ट व्हिच वी टॉक्ड अबाउट नेक्टर ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन the things which uh, we should avoid don't so the things which we should avoid the things which are detrimental for our bhakti right so what are those things the six things which are unfavorable atyahara prayasascha prajalpo niyamagraha so it talks about the six things which are unfavorable for our bhakti which we need to avoid and then now we are going to talk about six things which are favorable for bhakti so the text number 3 it talks about the three or the six things which are very favorable we should engage in those activities or we should take those activities very seriously so nectar of instruction text number 3 utsaha nischaya dhairya तत्कर्मा प्रवर्तना संग त्यागो सतो वृत्ति षडबीर भक्ति प्रसीदी सो बाय एंगेजिंग इन दीज सिक्स एक्टिविटीज अवर डिवोशनल एक्टिविटी प्रोग्रेस देर आर सिक्स प्रिंसिपल फेवरेबल टू द एक्सिक्यूशन ऑफ प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड वट आर दीज सिक्स थिंग्स बींग एंथ्यूजियास्टिक उत्साह निश्चयात nischayat means endeavoring with confidence sometime nischaya nischaya word is used for determination also but here the actual word meaning is by confidence with faith then dhairyat dhairyat means patience tat tat karma pravartanat by performing the activities which are favorable for devotional service means following the rules and regulation which help us in our devotional service then sang tyag by giving up the association of non devotees so in the previous verse also we read one point similar which says that can destroy our devotion which was jana sangha right so jana sangha is unfavorable and sang tyag so one should give up that worldly association then sato vritte sato vritte means by following in the footstep of great devotees shadbir bhakti prasidhyati so by these six devotional this principles our devotion service advances so we are going to talk about these principles today how these principles are to be taken up very seriously so first of all prabhupada writes about in the purport what is bhakti right what is real meaning of bhakti so bhakti bhakti is not some artificial fantasy or some imaginative ecstasy bhakti is a state of commitment it's a responsibility and moreover bhakti is a cultivation it's not that bhakti means something 
happen all of a sudden bhakti is cultivation and when we talk about cultivation means it's activity right so we need to have some sort of commitment some sort of responsibility like a mother's commitment for taking care of the child when a woman give birth to a child there is a commitment involved in that where right? the child will make so many things child will do so many things and mother has a commitment responsibility to take care of the child at the night the child wakes up doesn't uh, sleep or the child keep crying so it, it's not that mother just shuts off the child like you kind of shut off the alarm clock and again go back to sleep so there is she is taking care of the child no matter how many times the child wake up how many times the child is hungry or the child does the urinate urinates in the clothes and all that so mother is changing those clothes she is not thinking or oh, whatever it is let him just stay like that and let me take my sleep so we need to same way take a commitment responsibility if we really want to progress in bhakti it's not that bhakti means when you come in association of devotees or you come in association of a spiritual master then there is going to be some magic and all of a sudden you have a halo around your head it doesn't work like that we need to do our endeavor also and what is the definition of bhakti which is given in the scripture a nectar of devotion it talk about what is the definition anya bhilashita shunyam gyan karmaadi anavritam anukulena krishna anushilanam bhakti ruttama so what is the topmost level of bhakti which we aspire for anya abhilashita shunyam give up all other desires right there is no other material desire there is no desire for some material gain or name and fame or some other prosperity gyan karmaadi anavritam there is no speculative knowledge or there is no hankering for material enjoyment so giving up all these desires and then what is the next quality of bhakti uttama bhakti anukulena krishna anushilanam anukulena krishna anushilanam means which is favorable towards krishna it's not that we just whimsically do anything from our mind oh i want to do it like that way or this way doing the things which are favorable for krishna so thinking of krishna in a favorable way not like shishupal or not like kamsa who is also thinking of krishna but are they thinking of krishna favorably or unfavorably they are thinking of krishna in a mood of enviness in a mood of hatred in a mood of envy enmity so not engaging in devotional service that's not called devotion anukulena so it should be favorable towards krishna and bhakti ruttama so that is the highest level of bhakti now as i said bhakti is a cultivation right we need to cultivate that bhakti and when we want to cultivate what are the qualities needed so just think we have a relationship with krishna and that relationship is not just some external relationship we already have our permanent relationship with krishna right so we have that relationship with krishna now we have forgotten that relationship and now we want to revive that relationship with krishna so how to revive that relationship with krishna so to revive that relationship there are certain activities we need to do shravanam kirtanam smaranam so nine limbs of devotion service so following in those nine limbs of devotion service we can revive our relationship with krishna so it's not an external relationship see in this material world people have so many external relationships they see somebody right and the boy see some girl and they externally get attracted to that girl or the girl see some boy and she gets attracted to the boy externally then they want to spend time together they want to develop some sort of relationship so that is a external relationship of two bodies so we don't have a external relationship with krishna we have eternal relationship with krishna which we have forgotten and we need to revive rekindle that relationship 
and how we get that bhakti bhakti is also it says after wandering in this material world for many 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 lifetimes with the mercy of guru and krishna we get this seed of bhakti bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan mam prapadyate that's what krishna says in bhagavad gita after many many lifetimes when somebody in is is in knowledge he understand that vasudev is everything then they come to me brahma brahmand bhramite kono bhagyavan jeev guru krishna prasad pae bhakti lata beej after wandering in this material world for many many lifetimes with the mercy of guru and krishna we get that seed of bhakti and when we get that seed of bhakti what do we do with that seed you put that seed in the ground of our heart and then you nourish that seed you cultivate that seed by watering that seed with the process of shravanam kirtanam and with that the creeper of bhakti starts to grow so we need to nourish that seed nourish that creeper to continuously grow as any plant you grow any seed you have you put that seed in the ground it needs proper soil it needs proper watering it needs proper air and then that seed comes out as a small creeper small budding and then that continues to grow and ultimately it gives fruit so same way this bhakti lata the creeper of bhakti we need to grow and as we grow the plant we need to protect that plant from other weeds we need to protect that plant from other external dangers some animal may come and eat so you need to put a fence around so same way this bhakti creeper also we need to nourish that and we need to protect that creeper of bhakti because there may be many weeds of anarthas which start to grow and we need to protect it from those that the weed of pride the weed of envy weed of some name and fame puja la pratishtha so all these things are there which start growing as a weed and we need to uproot that weed to protect this creeper and to nourish continuously nourish that creeper what are the qualities what are the proper fertilizer needed that is these six point which are mentioned in this verse so we'll discuss these points one by one so first is enthusiasm utsah there has to be enthusiasm right any anything we do in the material world also there has to be some level of enthusiasm you go to your work you need to show some enthusiasm you need to get up in the morning get ready and go to work day after day after day you anybody any sports person they want to progress in that sport right they want to grow in their field they need to show some enthusiasm they get up early in the morning 5 o'clock they go to the field and do their practice no matter what the game is it's a baseball or a basketball or a football or a cricket any game they have to work so hard they have to have that enthusiasm to go and continue practice every day so that enthusiasm is the key we have we need to have that enthusiasm if we give up that enthusiasm if there is a boredom there is a dullness with that kind of mindset with that kind of attitude we cannot continue in our devotional service so that enthusiasm is the key and there are so many examples right in the scripture we read that with the enthusiasm how the devotee continue in devotional service anybody can think of any example on enthusiasm which you can which you have heard from any scriptures be it ramayan or mahabharat or chaitanya charitamrita or shrimad bhagavatam eklavya 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 okay um uh, dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj yes anything else prabhu ji lakshman ji lakshman ji in service of lord ramachandra yes so all are yeah. wonderful example yes 
Hanuman. Hanuman ji, yes. So all these are good example of enthusiasm, right? So there has to be enthusiasm to serve the Lord. And all these examples are actually a mix of enthusiasm and determination, right? There is a determination to serve the Lord. Now, uh, another example is Prahlad Maharaj also. Prahlad Maharaj, he had such an enthusiasm in continuing glorying the, glorifying the Lord uh, no matter what kind of situation he had, what kind of danger he had. And another example I can quote is of Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj's enthusiasm, uh, even though he, is no, he knows that he's going to die in seven days and uh, he has been hearing Bhagavatam he is not just counting the days. Okay, abhi ek din gaya, abhi do din gaye, abhi teen din gaye, to teen din bache hai. So he is not just thinking about that last minute when the death is going to come. He is very enthusiastic to hear about Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? He is telling Parikshukdev Goswami, please continue speaking. I am drinking the nectar from your mouth. He is not fatigued. He is not feeling hungry. He is not feeling thirsty. Even though when Shukdev Goswami told, if you want, we can take a break. You can go take some rest, some jalpan karlo, right? Go some drink something, eat something. He said, I don't need any jalpan. I am drinking the nectar from your lotus mouth. So that is enthusiasm. Engaging in the process of shravanam, kirtanam with utmost utsa. What, what is faith and what is enthusiasm actually? When even you don't know the end goal or when you even don't know the end destination, but you continue moving on that path with faith, uh, with determination. So these three things, the first three qualities which are mentioned in this verse, Utsaha, Nishaya, Dharya, these are three intertwined. They are linked actually. Because without faith, there cannot be enthusiasm. There cannot be determination. So all these three are linked. So enthusiasm is the first quality which is mentioned here. The sadhaka need to have that enthusiasm to continue in this process of devotional service. And then the next comes nishayat. And after nishayat, it's mentioned about dhairyat. But before we speak about nishayat, I will speak about dhairya because that is how in the purport Prabhupada has written in the flow. He is speaking about dhairya first. Any field, if you want to get success, there has to be patience. right? Nothing happens overnight. There has to be some patience when we are involved in engaged in any activity. As I say, Rome is, Rome is not built in a day. So it takes time to get the end result. No matter what kind of activity it is, again, either it's a material activity or a spiritual activity, there is patience needed. And what the kind of patience is, for example, when you are going on a journey, for the journey, you need the right vehicle, you need to know the route, right? So you need to have faith in the vehicle that okay, this vehicle will help me reach that destination and I am following the right path. You need to have faith in the GPS system that it's leading me to the right path. So yes, the faith is needed. There is enthusiasm needed in driving. It's not that, okay, you are sleeping and all, oh, I don't know when I'm going to reach. So there has to be enthusiasm that, okay, that is my destination, which is four hour drive. I need to get there. But along the way, you need to be patient. Because this is a four-hour journey and it's going to take time. It's not that the four-hour journey is going to cut down short in one hour. So it's going to take that due course of time. So one need to be patient. Yes, I am following the path. I am having faith in the uh, path in the vehicle and I need to enthusiastically drive. Ultimately, I will reach the destination. So again, these three things, both three things are needed here. You need to have faith, you need to have enthusiasm, and then you need to have patience also. Another example I will quote is maybe the disease metaphor. When you are diseased, you go to the doctor. So you, so you need to have to have faith in the doctor. And the doctor 
does your little checkup inspection and he gives you prescribes you some medicine so you need to have faith in the doctor you need to have faith in the medicine and then again you need to have patience because once you get that medicine you need to take that medicine as prescribed whatever it's a three day course or a seven day course you need to have patience that's a nahi hai ki ek dawai liya ek goli liya and then immediately you think now i want to be cured so it's going to take some time so again in the process there is faith needed there is patience needed then um if somebody want to lose weight as you are 20 pound overweight and you want to lose weight now again if you are impatient or oh, in within two days within one week i want to lose this 20 pound so i want to do some shortcuts i want to take some uh some follow certain process which can help me get rid of this 20 pound quickly that's now that's not how it works yes you need to follow the process you need to cut down on your uh, calories you need to follow the proper system of exercise routine and then in due course of time one will be able to lose the weight so there is again faith needed in the process and patience needed and enthusiasm also needed to continue in the process if somebody is becoming too impatient that's not going to help any more actually that can cause more problems once a person he went to the doctor he said doctor i am very much stressed out please give me something some medicine something quickly i can get free from this anxiety and this stress and the doctor told see your problem is that you are rushing too much that is your problem that is the cause of your stress so be patient right just slow down and your anxiety your stress will go down because we want everything quick that is the cause of our problem in spiritual life also people come to the spiritual life they want everything so quick oh i've been chanting for 6 month and i don't see any change in myself i don't see any emotional ecstasy coming i don't see the tears falling from my eyes or the body shivering in ecstasy so what is happening i so they lose faith in the process again we need to understand that process work and we need to be patient there is so much of conditioning for so many lifetimes which we need to now uncover we need to give up that conditioning and to give up that conditioning it is going to take some time but people think oh within few days after chanting few months after chanting i want to see some nice past times of radha krishna revealed in my heart i want to see krishna in my dreams so all those sort of they fantasizes the, these kind of things so again this is this does not work like that one need to have patience when we are engaging in any process we can understand from the example of a farmer also a farmer puts the seed in the ground he is watering the ground he is protecting the farm from the animals and from the weeds and then he waits for the crop to grow it's not that you put a seed in one day and next day the plant will come out so if the person puts the seed in the ground and he is becoming impatient and he want to dig out the seed and keep looking at the seed does it start sprouting or not is it going to help anyway is it going to cause any crop to come out so ultimately everything requires faith and patience a woman want to give birth to a child propad right quote that example actually in this purport also and many places propad quotes this example that if a woman want to conceive a child she need to be patient she need to serve her husband husband gives the seed and then in due course of time the child will grow right she, in due course of time she will give birth to a child so one cannot just think imitation that oh i want to give birth to a child tomorrow only so anything requires faith and when we work based on faith with enthusiasm then the result comes in due course of time so we right now we have been turning our back towards krishna now we want to turn as a lover of krishna 
right from material lover to krishna lover so that is going to take some time so there are so many examples actually regarding dhairya also patience from the scriptures anybody can quote some examples can you think of any example of patience from scriptures uh, again uh, dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj okay yes he had the patience he followed the process and in due course of time lord appeared in front of him anything else there are so many examples we can think of maybe like uh, after 12 years pandavas did uh, something right uh, like somewhere they hide and all that right so they they hidden their powers and then like arjuna like uh, he is in different form though he has a lot of strength and energy hide and be patient like that other pandavas also Yes, for that so, one year. Yes, example of Pandavas is also there. Yes, they went through the process. They had to go twelve years of exile in the forest and one year of incognito, a gyatvas. So they fulfilled all that conditions, all those requirements, and then they came back for their due rights, right, to claim their right. So yes, they followed the process patiently. It's not that they said, "Okay, we are not going to do this. We are going to rage war to rage self. We are going to fight for our right right now. How can they send us to the forest?" But they patiently went. They followed the all the conditions. Anything else? Yeah, another another big big example is I think Rama has shown the biggest patience. Even though uh, he could have done in very quick time all the things. but he has done uh, along his journey he liberated so many people and then he was taking help of hanuman and mm. then all this leela basically he shown lot of patience right every time lakshmana was getting impatient and he was kind of getting angry but rama was showing all the time patience and he he did whatever he planned and with patience he executed everything i think that is another great example yes that's a good example so lord ramchandra demonstrates patience in in the past time of lord ramchandra the the example of patience is when they reached at the shore of the ocean lord ramchandra he wanted to ask for the path right from the ocean and he observed fast for 3 days and uh, waiting for the ocean the varun dev to come out to fulfill his request so patiently he waited for 3 days he fasted for 3 days there sitting on the shore of the ocean and finally when he did not come then he had to take the other route so that was another example of patience and then building the bridge on the ocean see lord ramachandra does he really need a bridge on the ocean to cross over the ocean the lord ramachandra is same as vaman dev when vaman dev came in one footstep he covered the whole universe and so for the same lord how it is difficult to cross over the ocean he can cross over the ocean in one step he does not need to build a bridge but just to set an example to have that kind of a for us because we take pleasure in such things that oh he did such a wonderful activity building a bridge over the ocean and lord ramchandra he demonstrated that activity five days the bridge was built so lord ramchandra could have passed the ocean crossed the ocean in one moment but he waited for five days for this bridge to be built so that is another example of patience i will quote actually a couple of other very wonderful example which could be inspiration for us one example is shabari Okay, so Shabari, our Guru Matang Rishi told Shabari, 
when Matang Rishi was going to full kind of wind up his manifest Leela, before leaving, he called Shabari and he instructed Shabari, you just stay here, you chant the holy name, you chant the name of Lord Ramachandra and one day Ram will come to see you. He did not tell when he will come, where he will come, how he will come. He just told, you just continue to follow the process of sadhana bhakti. One day you will see Lord Ramachandra face to face. And she had that faith in the words of the Guru. She did not ask anything. She did not ask. She continuously waited and chanted the name of Lord Ramachandra. Every day she is sweeping the pathway coming to her kutiya. She is collecting the fruits every day. And how long she waited? 10,000 years. 10,000 years she waited and finally Lord Ramachandra along with Lakshmanji came to her hermitage. So that is the other example of having the faith in the words of the Guru and then following the process with enthusiasm and patience. So Shabri demonstrate all these three qualities. Utsaha, Nishaya, Dharyat. And again, all the, all the six actually. Tattat karma pravartanat. Sangatyaga shatovrittihi. Following in the footstep of great saintly people. Following all the rules and regulation and giving up the worldly association. She is not staying in the worldly association. She is just staying by herself among the hermits in the forest. So, following those kind of examples, we get that faith and belief that yes, we need to pro take the process seriously and one day we will develop that love of the Lord in our heart. We will be able to get rid of all these contamination in the heart and develop that rati, that attachment to the holy name. Another example of patience is Sampati. Okay? You all have heard of Sampati. Sampati was brother of Jatayu, right? Eagle, the eagle bird. And so Sampati was living on the shore of the ocean in a cave. And when the Vanaras, they were they came at the shore of the ocean searching for Mother Sita, one party. So Sugriva had made four parties of the Vanaras, sending them in four different directions to search for Mother Sita. So this one party, which com consists of Hanuman, Jamavant, Angad, so they all were traveling to the south direction and they came at the shore of the ocean. Now they were all thinking where to go now. In front of us is a vast ocean and how to cross beyond this ocean and go further to search for Mother Sita. And if we go back empty handed, so grief had given that condition. If you come empty handed, I will kill you all. So their situation was Aage kua piche khai. So we cannot go forward also. We cannot go back also. For us, it's death certain now. So they were thinking, why to go back? We'll just sit here on the shore of the ocean. We'll pass to death. Let death come here. And at that time, Sampati was sitting there. And he was seeing all these vanras, these monkeys, and what they were speaking, that uh, we will die here. And Sampati was saying, that the God has arranged for food for me because I cannot go anywhere to get food. I cannot fly. My wings are all broken, all burnt up. And the Lord has made arrangement. He had sent food for me. And when Sampati was telling like this, the monkeys heard his voice and they say, see, look at this eagle. One eagle, Jatayu, he served Lord Ramachandra. He, he was the servant of Lord Ramachandra. And this is another eagle who want to eat up the servants of Lord Ramachandra. See the difference. And when they spoke like this, Sampati heard that statement also. And he became alert when he heard the name of Jatayu. Oh, you are speaking about Jatayu. He is my brother. What happened to him? So then they told the whole story how Ravan or how one Rakshasa kidnapped Mother Sita and Jatayu was trying to fight with him and in that he gave up his life and Lord Ramachandra 
with his own hands he cremated him and on the other side you are you are you want to eat all of us so in that case when they were talking like talking like this he told his story then sampati he told his story what was his story he was telling that me and jatayu when we were young we had lot of energy and we flew we wanted to touch the sun so we flew up in the sky we were getting closer and closer to the sun and jatayu he felt the heat of the sun and he returned back from there but i was so arrogant i was so puffed up i continuously kept flying and my wings started burning and when my wings burnt up i fell down on the ground i lost my wings i fell in the hermitage of a sage by the name of uh, chandra and he was so merciful to me he gave me a boon that after 8000 years my wings will grow back and i will be able to again fly back and how the wings will grow back actually he said some of the servants of lord ramachandra will come in service of lord ramachandra and you help them you help them in their service and as soon as you help them you will grow back your wings so now i want to help you i don't have my wings i cannot fly to help you find mother sita but i have my sharp eyes with those eyes i can see very far and i can tell you the news of sita i can see that she is beyond after this crossing this ocean on the hill top there is a city of gold and she is there in that city so that's where you are going to find so the service actually the service can be done in many ways service doesn't happen only with our hands and legs right if somebody is disabled they cannot serve with their hands and legs still they can do the service they can do the service by their mouth by speaking about krishna even chanting of the holy name in itself is a service so jatayu uh, sampati help them by giving the news of mother sita and as soon as he gave that news his wings grew back and he regained his energy and strength and he flew from that place so this also is example of patience sampati had been patiently waiting for all these years 8000 years having that faith in the word of the sage that his wings one day will grow back the so same way we need to grow back our love of krishna right we have lost our relationship with krishna and we want to recultivate that relationship and we need to continue in the process of loving devotional service by regularly doing the chanting by regularly hearing reading associating with devotees and one day our wings which is the love for krishna will grow back and we will be able to go back to the spiritual world reunite with the supreme lord so there there are so many examples like that for patience but unfortunately right we as kind of a neophyte devotees and starting immature devotees we give up our faith in the process we give up our faith in the process we give up faith in the devotees we give up faith in the spiritual master we get so many doubts or oh, is it really so does it really happen we i want to find up some other method maybe some other method works better so people want become so impatient that they give up the process or they give up the path and they want to search for some shortcuts once one devotee actually in vrindavan he went to some radha kund baba ji and he was asking can you tell me what is my real swarupa in spiritual world if there are some so many uh, imposters also right in in the holy places also you give there are so many people who are cheaters also who will propose you who will tell you who will tell you your real swarupa who you are in spiritual world are you some manjari or close associate of krishna close associate of radharani so they want to impress you in that way sometime so this person went to some baba ji and uh, he asked what is my real swarupa 
and that baba ji said you give me some money i will tell you your real sabrupa so he paid him some money and that baba ji told oh in the spiritual world you are a peacock so this devotee heard oh i am a peacock in spiritual world dancing for the pleasure of krishna so he came back to the temple and he started imitating like a peacock he was moving his neck kind of as a peacock moves his neck that oh i will when i go back to the spiritual world i will be peacock so i may be need to practice how the peacock behaves so he became like a laughing stock for others he is imitating so one doesn't need to find out the real but like that real sabrupa will be revealed to you in due course of time when we progress in our spiritual life so people they want to just take some shortcuts and they think oh maybe this guru is not good or maybe this devotee is not good maybe i should go to somebody different who can uh, help me to progress so that is all example of being impatient yes i am not saying that everybody is perfect yes there are people may have some deficiencies but people sometimes think oh here they are talking about only basic teachings only you are not the body you are the soul i want to know some in depth confidential pastimes of radha and krishna so better i will go to somebody else some other um, sampradaya some other godiya vaishnavas or some baba ji is in the in vrindavan and ask them please tell me how to improve my sadhana or sometime the devotee think oh here only few devotees 5 10 devotees i want to get connected to a bigger group of devotees then i will be able to progress faster so it is not a matter of a smaller group of devotees or bigger group of devotees ultimately we have to do our part unless we do our part how can we progress so dhairya is a very important quality to have without patience nothing works and then the next one is nishchaya faith working with faith working with confidence that is said one need to have faith in the process one need to have faith in the person in the guru one need to have faith in scriptures one need to have faith in krishna one need to have faith in spiritual world yet yes there is a higher realm higher reality which exists so if we don't have faith in these things we will be filled with so many doubts sanshay and krishna says sanshay atma vinashyati for a doubting soul there is no happiness in this world or in the next so with faith one should act enthusiastically and also need to have patience then it's just a matter of time so there are again so many examples of working with faith anybody can quote any example working with faith i think same shabari uh, example uh, applies here yeah so example of shabari we quoted so she had a faith in the words of guru and she worked enthusiastically with patience Uh, again uh, example of prahlad mm-hmm. maharaj mm-hmm. can arjuna in kurukshetra arjuna hai krishna yes ahalya ahalya ha uh, vijay prabhu say again ahalya um, ahalya ahilya um yeah, yes there is in... faith in the sense yes she is just made into a stone she is waiting patiently that one day lord will come and relieve her from her situation her curse to be a stone and nalkavera that uh, past time of uh, uh, two trees um, those are all example of just being patient because they were cursed to be trees right it's not that they were having faith because they were doing all nonsense activities drinking and naked being in the water of um in the kailash dham mandakini river 
so they were cursed to become trees now they had no option to be patient right that was they had no option so it's not really as a example which we can quote as being hope faith and patience they had no other option because they were cursed to become like that yes brother yeah mother sita mother sita yes she is working patient uh, waiting patiently for lord ram to come and having faith in lord ramchandra one day lord ramchandra will come and rescue him, her from ravan so example of faith basically is having a complete faith in the shelter of krishna avashya rakshibe krishna i think arjun is one of the examples when uh, arjun is having the faith in krishna that is a wonderful example prabhuji yes arjun has faith in the words of krishna uh, krishna arjun has... dropdi also had faith in krishna yes dropdi is example of faith in krishna when she is disturbed and she just called out hey govind hey murari and lord krishna appeared she had faith that only krishna is her hope and shelter so krishna appeared and protected the draupadi in that situation so these are all good example of faith now the faith from what point of view we are talking about the faith here faith is abashya rakshibe krishna krishna will fulfill all my needs i don't have to look for any other shelter for example when we take to the process of krishna bhakti we say krishna is the supreme lord we don't need to approach other devi devatas for any other benefits any other things so having a soul faith in krishna that krishna is my protector he is my maintainer he will provide me all my needs that is the faith Uh, there is a very wonderful example actually from chaitanya charitamrita in chaitanya charitamrita there is example of shrivas pandit there is example of um kolavecha shridhar so lord tested them actually on their faith lord chaitanya chaitanya mahaprabhu tested about their faith uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu asked once shrivas thakur shrivas you have no occupation you don't know you don't do anything what if krishna does not supply your needs and shri was thakur he clapped three times and nitenand prabhu was standing there and watching and he was surprised what does this demonstrate what does this mean that he clapped three times and it, shri was thakur said or he explained that before i finish the clap three time i have the faith that krishna will put food in my hands krishna will put fulfill my needs that is his faith say if krishna does not provide if he, krishna does not fulfill my needs i will put the empty pots around my neck and i will drown myself into ganges his faith was so strong that krishna is going to take care of all his needs he doesn't have to take shelter of anybody else and there is another example of shiva uh, kolavecha shridhar Uh, so a devotee approached kolavecha shridhar shridhar kolavecha shridhar he is so poor person he what is his occupation he takes the banana leaves and he sells that banana leaves as to make the plate or cup and he sells the uh, stems of banana that's his occupation and having whatever income he earns for that also that little bit income he utilizes 50% in the service of mother ganges and only 50% he utilize for his maintenance so devotee asked kolavecha shridhar see you are so poor look at your hut your that leaf hut or the thorn hut what do you the, the straw right the straw leaf hut jisko bolte hai ki jhopdi jhopdi ki jo chhat hoti hai made of the straws he said see your roof has so many holes in that and when it rains there is so many so much water comes inside and look at your clothes look at your dhoti your dhoti has so many holes in that actually your dhoti has more holes than your roof and you are just putting knots in that and you are surviving in that way why you are worshiping krishna 
see th there are so many other people here they are so rich they are worshiping other devi devatas and they have so much wealth why you don't worship anybody else you may also get wealth somebody is the worshiper of kali or durga or other devi devata so they have so much prosperity and kolaveche shridhar his mood was krishna is on my only shelter no matter in what situation i am in what condition i am avashya rakshibe krishna krishna will take care of me so that is the faith in krishna that he is the supreme lord and we don't have to go anywhere else to take shelter krishna is going to provide all our needs in general what happens people become so much impatient they go to one temple one devi one devata and then next week they want to go somewhere else that oh maybe here our desire did not get fulfilled i want to go try somewhere else now and people in that way also they do what we call as a window shopping right as you go to the mall and you are standing in front of different different malls and just looking at this stuff so same way people go to temples also as temple shopping right aaj ye devata agle hafte wo devata agle hafte koi aur devata so and they put their desire in front of everybody and when one desire is fulfilled whichever devata they went they say oh now this devata because of him my desire got fulfilled now now onwards he is my kul devata so people have so much of impatience they want to take shortcuts they want to try out different different things maybe here or there or there so many people even they go to some peer babas or something else they want to do anything they don't want to take say as we say right don't leave any stone unturned so they don't want to turn leave any stone unturned they want to go follow everything mai church mein bhi jaunga mai dargah mein bhi jaunga mai mandir mein bhi jaunga i just let me follow everything let me do everything so it is the example of not having faith proper faith not having that proper understanding and krishna tells in bhagavad gita actually what is the situation of such people in bhagavad gita chapter 4 text 40 very beautiful verse actually krishna says agyasya ashraddha dhanascha sanshayatmah vinashyati nayam loko asti na paro na sukham sanshayatmanah so here krishna is actually talking about three category of people agya one who is without any knowledge right jisko kuch pata hi nahi hai so one is completely in darkness he has no knowledge that person and then ashraddha dhanascha ashraddha dhana means yes he is doing the process he is doing certain things following the process but he doesn't have faith ashraddha dhan shraddha nahi hai uske andar he is just doing as a external um pressure or some whatever is a so social culture social norms so he is just doing little bit but he has no faith so ashraddha dhan then third one is sanshayatma yes somebody is following the process he has little faith but along the way he develops so many doubt oh is krishna really the supreme lord what if somebody else is the supreme lord oh what if ultimately the brahman is everything brahma jyoti is everything because we speak so many time that brahma jyoti effulgence actually is coming from krishna but there are so many other people who will talk about brahman as being the ultimate thing oh what if they are correct what if we are wrong what if ultimately brahman is everything so they get so many doubts along the way so krishna is saying agyascha shraddha dhanascha sanshayatmah vinashyati so they have no hope nayam loko asti na paro neither in this world nor in the next na sukham sanshayatmana for the doubting soul there is no happiness there is no peace so that is the case of so many gyanis they they may read scriptures left and right they may know all the upanishads also so many vedas also they may be trivedi chaturvedi but they have no faith in the god they may they have no faith who is really god once prabhupad was in vrindavan and uh, two very scholarly people 
they came to see Prabhupada, like Chaturvedis. And Prabhupada asked them one simple question. See, you know all the Vedas. Can you tell me about the Supreme Lord? So they looked at each other and they told Prabhupada, Swamiji, you have asked a very tough question. It's a matter, it's a subject matter of a long discussion. In scriptures, there's so much explained about the Supreme Lord. How we can explain then in one minute what is Supreme Lord? Prabhupada called one Gurukul boy and asked, Tell me who is Supreme Lord? Yes, Prabhupada, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prabhupada gave them a little sweet, some cookie or something, and the boy went away. And Prabhupada said, See, even a small boy knows what is the ultimate conclusion of the Shastra, what is the ultimate conclusion of the scriptures. And here we big, big scholars, we think, oh, it's a subject matter of big debate. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vedas Chaham Sar, um, Vedas Sarver Aham Eva Vedyo. I am the ultimate conclusion of the Vedas. From the Vedas, I am to be known. Vedas Sarver Aham Eva Vedyo. I am to be known through all the Vedas. So Krishna is the ultimate reality. He is the Supreme Lord. And we need to have faith in that. And follow the process systematically, properly, without asking for or looking for any shortcuts. So following the process with Utsah, Nishay, Dhairiyat. And then following the proper rules and regulation giving up the worldly association and following in the footstep of the great saintly person, the great Acharyas, then the success is guaranteed. So I will stop here. We'll continue uh, on the discussion on faith and the remaining three in the next session. So let's see if anybody has any questions or comments. Prabhuji, how to create more and more faith? How to create more and more faith? Yes, that's a good question. Faith is developed by the association. More we associate with the people who have faith, we will also develop faith. So their faith will rub on us also. Right? The devotees, that's why their devotees are considered as wish-fulfilling pre. Vanchaha kalpatru bhyascha. Kalpataru. So devotees are considered as a kalpatru, desire-fulfilling trees. So we need to associate with devotees who have faith. If we are associating with some only devotees who are at our level, who also are lacking in faith, then how our faith will grow. So that's why in the scripture, actually the next verse will come. It talks about the association at three different levels. So associating with equals, associating with hires, and associating with who are lower than us, who are younger, immature than us, how to associate with three level of devotees. So we need to not look for association only somebody who is um, newcomer to us or who is less advanced than us or who is equal to us. But we should associate with who are more advanced than us so that we can develop their qualities, absorb from their mood and grow in that way in Krishna consciousness. Because if we, want, if, our, if we are seeking association only of the equal people or oh, these devotees, they are like me only. Uh, we all, three of us came in process together and we are uh, very dear buddies. So we want to hang around together. So if we just want to stay in our comfort zone with that level of devotees, our progress will be very slow. And sometimes if somebody else also get doubt, we also get that doubt, right? That person can put doubt in our heart also. So we need to always seek association of devotees who have very strong faith. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. I, I I had one comment. So, yes, bro. Uh, so the, this is this is a very important question. How to increase the faith? So the the part the ABCD we have like association. Speak a little louder. Um, I cannot hear you clearly. You cannot hear me. I can hear, but it's not very smooth voice. It's uh. Hello. Yes. Now it's much better. Okay. 
So, uh, so faith, we have uh, prescribed four activities, association and reading books, chanting and then diet. So yes. these three activities, but uh, faith is kind of proportional to uh, purity of somebody's heart or mind. So now what happened is, suppose two person does the same thing, uh, like uh, both are doing all the four activities, same uh, amount, but faith may uh, be a little different from each other. Mm -hmm. One might have higher, bigger, bigger faith, another may have a little lower faith. This reason could be the purity of heart. So because of the past karmas and all the purity of heart is not same for everyone. So sometimes yes. what might happen uh, by doing this process, sometimes one might get doubt I am not getting faith like the other person. So it is important to know that faith is going to be an individual path, basically. It is not going to be the same with the other by doing the same activity. But the process is the same. ABCD is going to, no matter who, whoever at whatever level, ABCD, whoever is following, they will uh, kind of purify their heart along the path and they will increase their faith by doing that. <laughs> yes. So, yes, that is a good point. So, even though externally we may be doing same activities, but ultimately one person may grow faster, his faith is much stronger than the other person because it all depends on our internal conditioning also, our internal um, impressions on the mind, how quickly we are getting relief from those impressions. See, it's not, see, when we say chanting also, two people are doing 16 round chanting. Yes, externally, both are doing 16 round chanting, but internally, are they both doing the 16 round chanting at this, with the same level of sincerity, with the same level of focus and absorption? So that all matters on that. It's not about external, all, it's all internal. So purity comes with how sincerely we follow the process. It's not that, oh, I have been also going to temple. You have been also coming to temple for five years. One person has progressed a lot. Another person is still at same level. And they may think, oh, I'm also at your equal level. We both started together. Or somebody may think, I am senior than you in terms of when I started in Krishna consciousness. But so somebody, it's not about external superiority or seniority. It's all internal. We have seen in the process, somebody comes through the process and he becomes so advanced in matter of couple of years. And there is another devotee who may be coming for 10 years and still he's at the same level. So it's all our internal also, our conditioning also. Because Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, when Arjuna asks this question, see, if I take to the process of spirituality and if I don't gain the full success, Will I lose from both ends? I did not grow spiritually also and I sacrificed on material prosperity also. So I will lose from both ends. Krishna said, no, there is no loss for a person who takes to the process of spirituality. There is a win-win situation everywhere actually in both situations. Even if, if you are not success, 100% successful, Still, you have not lost it because in the next life, one will continue from that same point. If somebody has made 10% progress in spirituality, in the next life, they will start from 11%. If somebody has done 60% progress, they will start from that level only. Whereas in material life, whatever, no matter how much you gained in material life, it will be all lost at the end of the life and one will again start from zero. But that's not the case in spiritual life. There is no loss. There is only gain. In the next life, either they will be born in the house of Srimatas, right? The who are very opulent, very wealthy, or one will be born in the families of aristocratic Brahmanas, a Vaishnavas, where he has from the childhood proper training to progress in spiritual life, in devotional life. So one continues from that point. So again, it's again the matter of our internal conditioning. We are we are not fighting with anybody else actually. We are fighting with ourselves. We are we 
the only competition we have with ourselves. So, thank you. One more, uh, one more point I wanted to bring about this faith, and that is, uh, so even uh, we, we we do all these four four things like ABCD. Uh, in case someone doesn't know ABCD, ABCD is association, and then reading books, and then C is chanting these diet. So another another important thing about the faith is always everybody has intelligence, and that intelligence sometimes become very big enemy for faith. So because intelligence, the nature of intelligence is it is always ask for logics and it demand logic to satisfy basically. Otherwise, intelligence might create issue for uh, faith. So, mm -hmm. so that that kind of thing might happen. So, in that case, one should go to a, a proper guru or a knowledgeable person who can clear the doubt. And keeping the doubt in the heart and not asking questions, that could be another problem. Yes. So that's why clearing the doubt and so that intelligence gets specified and uh, faith become more stronger. That is the idea. Yes, very good point. Okay. Anybody uh, has any other point? Yes, Vijay Prabhu. One is uh, uh, how do we uh, come to know uh, our true self or true nature? Uh, one is uh, either it could be uh, Krishna can re uh, reveal it to us through our heart or maybe um, a guru can tell that, you know, this is your true nature. So I just want to know how is that, you know, one can know the true nature. And uh, second is, you know, uh, how do you measure uh, the level of, you know, at what level you are at, uh, spiritually grown and hmm. how do you know that, you know, you are at this level 10%, 15%. Okay, so it's not like, okay, we are at a 10% level or a 20% level. That is just to make, to convey the point. But okay, let's go to your first question. So how do we know our real identity, real Savrupa? See, we don't have to endeavor for our real Savrupa. You may know it, you may not know it. Ultimately, you will, when you become eligible to go back to the spiritual world, you will be going there in your real Savrupa. So you will know who you are in the spiritual world, what is your role there, what is your service there. We don't have to artificially try to find it out. And we, we don't have to approach the Guru, oh, please tell me what is my real Savrupa. Our purpose of approaching the Guru should be, please guide me in the process of spiritual life, in the process of devotional life, what I need to do to purify myself. We should not be approaching the spiritual master for any material gains. right? Somebody may approach, oh, please bless me so that I can get a big house. Please bless me so I can get my visa, my green card done. Please bless me, my son gets married, find a suitable girl. So all these things, those are all material uh, demands, material desires for which we should not be approaching Guru for such material desires. We should be approaching Guru to help us in our spiritual progress. Again, not thinking that a oh, Guru will do some magic. He is going to put his head on my hand and next morning when I get up, I will be a completely changed person. I will become a pure devotee. So it's not like that. We have to do our endeavor. Yes, Guru's blessings are there. With the Guru's blessing, we can get the required strength to continue in the process of devotional service. So second question is, um, how do we know if I am making progress and how much progress I am making. So to that point, actually, we should know if our desire for engaging more and more in spiritual life is increasing, then you are making progress. What are the nine stages of spiritual progress? So it starts with Shraddha. Adho Shraddha, Tatha Sadhu Sangha, Tato Bhajana Kriya, Tato Anartha Nivritti. Then comes Nishtha, Ruchi, Asakti, Prema. So we should understand, is my desire to associate more and more with devotees increasing? Or I am still considering it as a burden? Right? Am I still thinking, oh my God, too much, too, 
this but friday also again i have to go to bhakti vriksha this sunday again i have to go to temple is my desire for association increasing is my desire for shravanam kirtanam increasing or it all feels as a burden to me is i am getting more and more attached to krishna so we have to just self evaluate ourselves that's introspection so that is the measure of our spiritual progress and at the same time are my other material desires subsiding down or not are my other material um some materialistic activities like going to parties going to movies some other mundane gossip and all are those things going down or i'm still hankering for those things or hankering for that kind of enjoyment so two things are there is my interest in those activity getting down and my interest in the spiritual activity increasing or not that is the measure of our progress prabhu here uh, 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 like bj prabhu was asking two questions right and the first question prabhu was saying true nature but i think the way prabhu was asking the question prabhu is actually asking for example prabhu wants to go to a guru and he will tell that guru so can you tell me my my nature that's what i think prabhu was asking can you tell me my nature and how much how how i how much i have progressed i think that is the prabhu actually not asking for the real true nature i think he is asking what is my current nature and how how i can progress is, is that correct prabhu or you are asking the true nature yeah Because i your thought question, your question sounded like to me that you are you mean true nature but you are talking about most likely the false ego nature what is your current nature that's what you asked looks like to me well, what did you ask prabhu what, i thought he was you... asking about like his real sabrupa does krishna reveal that real nature or how do we come yeah, to know yeah. that are, are you did you ask that prabhu? Yeah, yes prabhu ji yes yes oh okay, yeah, okay yes okay. yes yes okay I, i i thought you asked about your current nature you want to know from your guru <laughs> okay all right so hopefully that explains vijay prabhu yes prabhu ji yes. okay so i think we will end here we'll continue in the next session if anybody has any more question so we'll uh, continue in the next session thank you very much shila prabhupad ki jai anant koti vaishnav vrind ki jai